All right, before we get to talking about the most anticipated number two of the year, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Displate. Displate offers high quality prints with millions of options available. Movies, video games, abstract art, whatever your flavor, they got you covered. Not only are they printed on metal so the art really pops, but now for that extra pop they've launched, Textra. With 3D printed details, selective gloss, and matte effects, it's a textured finish that pops out of the poster. The color's more vibrant, it's art you can feel. All with Displate's easy magnetic mounting system. So if you don't want holes in your drywall or you have a landlord that might feel a certain way about that, no problem. Hanging new prints is as easy as ever. Wipe down the wall, hang the magnet, you're done. Also makes it easy when you want to change it up. So click the link below, go to Displate.com slash Jeremy. I own the market on the first name, that's neat. Transform your cave with some new texture prints. And while you're browsing, comment below. Let me know your favorites. And now, here we go. I feel like now that I cut my hair, I look less sad when I pour scotch on camera. Less possibility of a wellness check. So Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver is part two of Rebel Moon Part 1, whatever that was called, in which there are going to be two kinds of people in the world. People who did not watch Rebel Moon Part 1, people who did watch Rebel Moon Part 1 once. Either way, you're gonna be a little confused in this movie. It's not like there's a recap, it's just, here we go. I kind of appreciate that though. There's an Anthony Hopkins voiceover at the beginning that just kind of half-asses it, but I was still left with that feeling of, wait, what are we doing in this one again? What was the last one leading to? And when the fight actually started happening, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. The first one was getting the band together and part two is their great seven space samurai moment. Simple in concept, huge in ambition, which doesn't translate to screen. Neither translates to screen. Because in execution, it comes across as overly convoluted, yet paper thin. Okay, the good out of the way, because I poured scotch, and I do that when there's good. Some of the action was all right. I'm a sucker for a solid, satisfying hit with a laser gun. Sounds like I'm scraping for positives. Well, some of the combat choreography, general cinematography can be ass, no doubt. But there were moments that shine through where I was like, optimist in me wants to recognize that. Oh, another slow motion. Oh man, so much, so much of the slow-mo. Slow-mo shots of really epic moments like cutting wheat. Epic in Weird Al's Amish Paradise video. Rebel Moon Part 2 just feels like it's wasting time. Which, I love me a good slow-mo shot. Who doesn't? That can enhance when used in moderation. Excessive use of it, you start getting the feeling you get in Rebel Moon, which is okay. So this two hour, five minute movie or whatever it is, is actually about 67 minutes of content. I mean, you look at God of War, Kratos has a combo, a classic combo, spam square, spam triangle. And for that last hit, he arcs up and it cuts to slow-mo for that last hit and bam, it's amazing and satisfying. Now imagine every other hit, possibly two out of three hits is a slow-mo shot. Yeah, that would get annoying. It would hamstring the flow. Guess what happens in Rebel Moon? Well, I will leave that for you to decipher. Some of the action in this movie almost, and by almost, I mean didn't, but almost could have felt like that game Bro Force, but for Star Wars. Ridiculous enough to be fun. Involving unlicensed versions of characters from IP. But whereas Bro Force, if you haven't played Bro Force, side note, it's a fun time. Get a friend, play it especially if you love action movies. But I'll never call Bro Force Dollar Store this or that because it's supposed to be a celebration of those things, of those IP. Rebel Moon comes across as Dollar Store, it comes across as fanfic. Some of the CGI was fine, other CGI was complete and total ass. And this movie really runs into a problem, which the point is actually, it's a skirmish, it's a fight. Involving characters, I was constantly going, who are they again? Who is she? Why do I give a shit? These characters are in pain, in peril, in danger, and I just didn't give enough of a fuck. Which I feel like Zack Snyder knows because there's this one very, I guess we'll call it on the nose round table discussion in which they're all talking to each other. It's like, okay, what's your backstory? And the person gives their backstory. What's your backstory? And they give their backstory. Because when you can't hook the audience to care about the characters in the movie, we'll just give them backstory dump. Came across as lazy. It came across as the character bios in a fighting game. Like, you know, if you just leave Mortal Kombat running and you don't start the fight, you get the character bio. Totally works in a fighting game like Mortal Kombat does not work when you're part two of two and building your movie franchise. Funny enough, the most interesting or at least compelling character in the entire thing is the robot. Or we can concentrate on the Scar Giver. Why is she called the Scar Giver? Why is this called the Scar Giver? I guess that's her nickname because she stabbed the Nazi in space guy and he has a scar that 
the bathta tank couldn't get rid of so i guess she's the scar giver now i've seen it hypothesized that that's not why she's called the scar giver it's because she brings destruction to everybody she comes across she just leaves a wake of scars in the galaxy so she's the scar giver but it never really hammers that point home so if that's why she's called the scar giver and that's why this is called the scar giver that's a huge miss a far smaller miss is that she's called the scar giver because she did in fact give this guy a scar i know it's a dumb nickname it just reeks of desperation you feel like Zack snyder was like i want her to have a really cool nickname well she gave him a scar i don't know she knocked his teeth out in part one why not call her the dentist the extractor people hate dennis a nickname that sticks feels earned or at the very least clever that requires time time and consensus you look at game of thrones mother of dragons breaker of chains the 78 other titles she gave herself we had time enough to see her do these actions that led to these nicknames scar giver just feels desperate like she did a thing once she beat a guy in a fight she gets a nickname now but it just doesn't feel earned in a world where holloway is not known as the doll maker after that epic ko in 300 she's not the scar giver in the end zack snyder he needs better writers in the room. He needs writers that can look at his stylistic storyboard ideas and be like, all right, there's something I can work with here. He also needs people who can tell him, no, that doesn't work. You need to do something different. And he needs to listen to those people when they say that. He's the classic case of your weaknesses are your strengths and your strengths are your weaknesses just in certain situations. The guy can make some cool stylistic stuff. We've all seen it happen. Depends on if you love or hate his work, but that's kind of another point. He says his films have always been divisive and I've seen them be divisive. But with the case of Rebel Moon, no, it's generally speaking the consensus among critics and audiences is that it's not good. There's no real hook in a world where you can tell he wants this to be the next Dune or the next Lord of the Rings. The problem for Rebel Moon is in the case of Dune or Lord of the Rings, if the movies hook somebody, there's more content out there for them to dive into so they can know more about the world. And it's content that's been out there for decades. All Rebel Moon has is Rebel Moon part one and two. Not only is that it, but these movies haven't given anyone any reason to possibly look forward to what might come next. At best, it's a Star Wars parody. At worst, it's a Zack Snyder parody. Either way in terms of the story of Zack Snyder pitched this to Lucasfilm and Lucasfilm said no thank you looking more and more like Lucasfilm was being responsible with that call and that's saying a lot Rebel Moon part two feels more like number two that is to say dog shit all right so Rebel Moon number two have you seen it what did you think about it whatever you thought comment below let me know and as always if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more click right here to see more swapping hands <laughs>